All right, so continuing now with our coverage of Newton's laws, we're going to be dealing with the difference between mass and weight, as well as uh, listing some of the most common forces that we'll see in physics. So we'll begin with this difference between mass and weight. So as we call, as we uh, covered in the last video, mass is a measure of inertia. Basically, basically, it's a resistance to change in velocity, and this is all you know, measured with the kilogram, which is one simple universal unit. Weight, however, is a bit more complicated. You see, you can have a mass on in kilograms, and that is simply how hard it is to move you. Weight is a measure of the force required, uh, basically the force exerted on you. So the force exerted uh, by gravity. And because force equals mass times acceleration, your weight, which is a force, is your mass times the gravitational acceleration of the Earth, which we normally represent as g. And this will always point towards the center of the Earth, regardless of you know whether you're flying through the air, you're on a slope, etc. It always points towards the center of the Earth. And so your mass is sort of a universal measurement. You're going to have the same mass on the moon as you will on Earth as you will on Mars. However, uh, weight will change with this constant g. So on Earth, you're going to have, you know, your 9.8 meters per second squared. On the moon, it'll be something different. On Jupiter, it'll be something extreme, etc. Basically, your weight will change as you go from a uh, different gravitational field from one to the next, but your mass will not. Moving on now, we're going to be sort of listing the main uh, four forces that we deal with in everyday physics problems. The first of which is going to be uh, weight, which we just discussed, usually represented by a W for weight or just mg for your mass times the gravitational field you're in. And its magnitude is always going to be your mass times the gravitational acceleration. And its direction is straight down. So that would be towards Earth's center regardless of where you are on the planet. Now the normal force is a bit more complicated and it's normally represented by n. Basically this is a force that acts perpendicular to a wall when you push on it or a block, any really flat surface, actually really any surface, but uh, we're mostly going to be using flat surfaces just because it's easy to uh, mark what's perpendicular to that surface. You don't have to worry about where it's tangent. Um, basically any surface that resists a push. So this is going to be determined by the second law. In other words, uh, F equals MA. This force is going to be determined by uh, how much is pushing on it, you know, what it's accelerating, etc. So it varies from uh, problem to problem. And it's always perpendicular to the surface that's exerting or upon which it's being exerted. So, you know, if you have a ramp like this, the normal force will act that way on that wall. It will act straight out from that wall and straight down from the bottom of this wedge. Moving on now, friction is uh, our next force. It's usually represented by lowercase f because capital F is reserved for a general force term. And there's two types of friction. You have static friction and kinetic friction. Now static friction is when things are not moving. So this is resisting uh, change uh, when something isn't moving already. And as you can guess, kinetic is the opposite. So this is the friction that applies when something is already moving. And both have the magnitude uh, determined by a constant known as mu. You have mu s and mu k. And these are what are known as the coefficients of friction. And these are dimensionless constants, basically, uh, that you measure through experimentation. There's whole huge books of these for engineering and physics and whatnot uh, to determine your coefficient of friction between two surfaces. So each surface, you know, wood, metal, rubber, uh, applying 
uh, force of friction between these two surfaces will have a different mu value between wood and metal than it will between uh, wood and rubber. And so what you have to realize is that getting back to the actual magnitude, static friction is basically going to have the magnitude necessary to resist a force opposing it. So if you push slightly on your dresser, uh, the friction on the floor will only oppose it with enough necessary to counteract that small force. Otherwise, if it acted with a huge force to resist, the dresser would accelerate this way. But likewise, if you act with a large force, um, it will oppose with the large force. So friction sort of uh, goes with whatever it is opposing until you overcome it with a large enough force where it can no longer resist and then the object will naturally begin to accelerate in the direction of the net force. Now kinetic friction is completely different. Kinetic friction with this mu k is constant and that is given usually by the formula friction equals mu k times the normal force. So surface area, you know, uh, whatnot don't really matter. All that matters in terms of determining the actual magnitude of your friction is going to be the normal force. And finally, the direction of friction is always going to be uh, anti-parallel to the force opposing it. So if you have a surface and you're pushing a block this way, then the force of friction, with assuming uh, it's a friction a surface with friction will be acting opposite the direction of motion. So if you push it backwards, which makes sense because it's hard to push something, uh, basically you notice a resistance when you push something along a surface. Now the last uh, force we're going to be discussing is tension, usually represented by a capital case T, and this has to do with, let's say you have you know a rope attached to something. This T usually represents the tension in the rope or the piano wire. You know, something that you're pulling on uh, that gives it uh, basically a, a tension, really. And this, is just like uh, the normal or support force, is given by the second law. So how much it's accelerating, how much force is being exerted on the rope, etc. So, you know, it's proportional to the mass that it's accelerating. And this is always in the direction of the rope or wire or what have you and it can only pull which makes sense because if you push on a rope rather than uh, it pushing back on the object to which it's attached it just goes slack in your hands and you're left with uh, you have to pull up the slack again if you want to pull it so you basically can only act tension in one direction uh, which is in line with the rope now fi that finishes up our coverage of mass, weight, and our list of forces, so you should know uh, the difference between mass and weight as well as uh, the main four forces, the directions in which they act, and how their magnitude is determined.